Karina, really nice to speak to you. Let's Likewise. take it back in time and back to basics. How did you get into birding and wildlife? Well, wildlife in general had always been an interest of mine. And when I was five years old, four or five years old, I wrote a little note to myself that said, when I grow up, I want to be a scientist and I want to be a scientist on bugs and animals. So I knew pretty early on that I wanted to work with wildlife in some capacity. But because I grew up in the city in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I didn't really see a lot of uh, birds around me or wildlife around me. And it actually wasn't until I was all the way in college that I began to appreciate native wildlife at all, especially birds, because I assumed that all birds were basically the same color, pretty uninteresting among wildlife. And I found out quickly that I was wrong. So when I took ornithology study of birds, the first bird that I learned about was the blue jay. And when I tell you I was shocked that such a beautiful bird could live in North America, I was blown away. Everyone thought I was crazy because I'd never seen a blue jay before, which is a fairly common bird in North America. Um, and so once I saw that blue jay, I was kind of hooked, addicted to finding birds. And from that point forward, I have been birding recreationally and decided that I wanted to work towards the conservation of birds for my career. And what about when you were young? Did your parents encourage your desire to be a, a young scientist? And, and, and also, what about mentors? Did you have outside of the family, perhaps, you know, any, any mentors that really encouraged you to pursue this? Because sometimes it's not easy for young women to find their way into science. That's true, yeah. So before my father passed away, he had accumulated lots and lots of books about the natural world, which I paved through religiously because I was so intrigued by it. And my mother was pretty, a very outdoorsy, adventurous type. And so she always encouraged my passion for wildlife and would oftentimes take us outside of the city, out into the suburbs where there was more like natural spaces and green spaces. And we would just walk around and soak it up. We didn't know what we were looking at as far as, as, as wildlife was concerned, but she would take us out so that we could get exposure outside of the city. So my mother really encouraged it. And my father had books that I still to this day use and read um, out of curiosity. And my grandmother, she would send me National Geographic magazines all the time. I would look forward to that every couple months because I get a whole stack. Um, but none of them were wildlife experts, right? They couldn't really help me necessarily in guiding me towards a career. And so when I was a senior in high school, there was a uh, black zookeeper who was the lead carnivore keeper at my local zoo, the Philadelphia Zoo. And she had, through a family friend, heard that I was interested in wildlife but had no direction. And so she reached out to me and invited me to come behind the scenes with her to watch how she breeds giant river otters, how she trains can can uh, Canadian lynx, what, you know, what the diet preparation looks like for all kinds of carnivores behind the scenes that I never would have even known existed. And I got to see a reflection of myself in the field. So I kind of got two for one. And that was essentially the springboard. Um, and to this day, she still mentors me in my career and encourage, encourages me. Um, but that was essentially what got me started on the career path that I'm in. That's fantastic to have, have someone like that. And you spent quite a bit of time working in zoological collections, I, I understand as well. Yes, I started at the Philadelphia Zoo, my home zoo, interning during the summers in college. And then after that, I was a zookeeper for about four years. Excellent. And, and, and now birding's taken over, as you say, recreationally. Where do you go birding? What do you see? What's top bird on your list recently? So my top bird to find, so like my unicorn bird right now is the American Abacet, which is a bird that you can find in wetlands. And I currently live on the southern uh, part of, of Georgia here in the U.S. on the coast specifically, so I should be able to see one. For some reason, they have evaded me. Um, so that's the bird that I'm looking for right now, but during the breeding season, there are so many rookeries down here where you can see all kinds of wading birds like roseate spoonbills and great egrets, which are absolutely ridiculous birds when they're fledglings. They're hilarious to watch. Um, and all kinds of, of, of birds during the breeding season. So I go to any of the, the rookeries here on the coast. Those American avocets are striking birds. They're, they're, I should say, for the purpose of our viewers, they're slightly different. Ours are purely pied, so they're just mm. sort of black and white with blue legs and bill. But yours have that lovely golden orange head in the breeding season, don't they? They're pretty special. Yes. Yes, they do. And so I've, I'm trying to, like, feverishly, before I'm finished on the coast here, find one so I can get it on my list and see the beauty for myself. 
Your birding obviously, uh, you know, has uh, drew your attention to that horrific incident in Central Park earlier this year. Christian Cooper was abused there. Um, and your response was to do something truly inspirational. So tell us about how you felt when you first saw that recording of that racial abuse and, and then what happened in, in terms of developing Black Birders Week. Yeah, so when I saw that video, it essentially reminded me of the experience of Black people anywhere. Um, there is this essentially constant reminder that you have to not uh, threaten the, the comfort of white people in your space or else something like the police can be weaponized against you. And in the United States, we've seen repeatedly that use of force is much greater against black bodies, again, against black people. And so when I saw that video, I immediately imagined the way that it could have ended and the way that it's ended for many, especially black men's lives. And we saw later that day ended a black man's life. And so my visceral reaction was like relief that it didn't get worse, um, but it was very familiar to see that. And so because Christian is a person that many of us in my friend group, my, my birding friend group know of, and some of us know him personally, uh, we were enraged because now it was kind of hitting close to home. So we, I have a, a, a group of friends, uh, my friend Jason Ward, who's a birder here in the US, started a group chat of just black people who enjoy nature and the outdoors. And so one of the women in the group was like, you know what, we need to do something to celebrate black birders and bring awareness to the experience of black birders. And it kind of went from there. And within literally 48 hours, we had crafted an entire week of like online engagement and celebration and conversation to, to, to establish and to accomplish exactly what we wanted to do. And, you know, we had six days of uh, engagement around the country and around the world, black people kind of celebrating blackness in the outdoors and people who aren't black being willing to engage in conversation about what our experience has been. And so it was absolutely an honor and so encouraging to do. And it was picked up widely. That's the, the really great thing. It was all over the United States media. You did brilliantly there. But I have to tell you here in the UK, it was all over our social media too. It, it was inspirational for so many people. Wow. And it was, it, I, every time I heard someone talk about their experience from somewhere that wasn't a place that I'd been and somewhere outside of the US, I was reminded of how important it is that black people find community in these spaces. And next year, uh, um, presumably it will become an annual thing now. It should grow and grow, I hope. Absolutely. We are going to be planning next year's Black Birders Week bigger and, more, uh, and, and reaching even further, hopefully. And one thing that's been great to see is that it's inspired a lot of other kind of groups within the Black community who do STEM careers or recreational STEM activities to start their own Black Blank Week. So, for example, there is Black Botanist Week and there's Black uh, uh, Neurobiology Week, so many opportunities to celebrate Blackness in the STEM spaces, and it's been so wonderful. That was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to you and all of your team. It, it was, as I say, truly inspirational and, lo and sadly long overdue, but going from strength to strength will be a, a great way forward. I'd just like to conclude by drawing everyone's attention to your, um, well, should we say musical career? <laughs> because I found <laughs> it. <laughs> I know, I don't know whether you know what I'm on. So I, I see that you, you covered a rap at, at, with your own little sort of um, nod to twitching, as we call it in the UK, when you people go out, you know, they get their big list and anything for the count. <laughs> that was... your plans. I mean, that's a great way of communicating with a part of society that typically isn't involved in birding. That's got to be said. Right. Yeah. That, it's funny because that was totally a joke that me and my friend, we were supposed to be studying for finals and doing all this work, but we were like, you know what, let's instead remix a Cardi B and Offset rap <laughs> to talk about birds. And we did it and then people liked it, which we were <laughs> surprised by or entertained by it. So I've been trying to think of ways to remix more songs. That was supposed to be a one-off situation, but the fans love it. <laughs> Well, the fans are going to love it even more now, Karina, because we're going to play it if we can off the back of this interview. So you'll get some UK fan base developing here. Thanks ever so much oh for God. taking the time to chat to us. It's fantastic. As I say, you've become an inspirational force in world, board, uh, world birding, and we really wish you well. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Chris. It's an honour to meet you finally. been a huge fan, and it's great to talk to you.